sorry about that, babe. While I can't sit here and say that I grew up playing the Quintet Trilogy, over the last 6 plus years or so when I finally got around to Soul Blazer and Illusion of Gaia, I became very fond of the games due to both their gameplay and messages. In fact, they have both been some replay RPGs of mine in that I enjoyed them both so much that I've also played through them again some years after the first romp. But there was always that one elephant in the room. Terranigma. The last of the trilogy, the one that we never got officially here in the United States, and for some reason I just never got around to it until recently where we streamed the game here on my YouTube channel. Going into the game I heard nothing but universal praise, so many review scores of 9, perfect 10s, an immense amount of adulation on sites like Reddit and other RPG review outlets, rusting this title up there with the quote juggernauts, I use that term broadly, games such as Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, and so on. I go into every game with an open mind whether it receives good, bad, or middling reception but I couldn't help but be overly excited for the experience. From what I read and seen, this is quite possibly one of the greatest games of all time. Well, what did I think of it? Let's get started. Now this is a section that could be super long, but keeping it as brief as possible so you just get the picture, Terranigma more or less revolves around the planet as we know it. Possessing both an external and internal side, or face, the external side is that of light, which is what we see on the surface of the Earth, and the internal dark side is that of the underworld. A simple concept of growth versus decline is shown here. In classic quintet style, the external internal, growth decline, became to be known essentially as God and the Devil. Though growth took place and life expanded, the struggle continued, ultimately ending in the continents of the world being submerged and the underworld being sealed away. Terranigma is divided into four chapters of which the final three I'll leave you to discover for yourself. But the gist of the first chapter thrusts you into the game as the main character Ark in the underworld town of Krista, who in classic JRPG fashion stumbles upon something that he shouldn't have, his hometown gets frozen, and then he's tasked by the elder of the village to resurrect the continents and unfreeze the people of Krista. After some trials and tribulations, Ark bids farewell to life as he knows it and heads to the light side or the surface world to then resurrect all living beings. If you have any familiarity with Soul Blazer and Illusion of Gaia, you can see that the same general theme permeates throughout Terranigma, where the Earth is the main piece and life has vast meaning, and many things need to be resurrected in some capacity. The story of Terranigma is wide-reaching, winding, complex at times, and also a bit muddled due to the overall, in my opinion, poor translation, but what is there is a cut above the standard RPG storyline, as you've grown to expect with these quintet titles. The Graphics Graphically, Terranigma is a pleasure to look at. You can clearly tell that this is an advancement and final installation of the trilogy, in many ways surpassing the graphics of the previous two titles. Although I will admit at times I prefer the looks and feel of Illusion of Gaia a bit more, it's hard to deny the beauty of Terranigma. The graphics are sharp, the colors pop, many of the dungeons have their own distinct look and feel, there's an excellent use of Mode 7 throughout the game, and there's also one of the most unique scroll effects that I've ever seen in a game for that of the Underworld in Chapter 1. And the cutscenes in the game feature some insane imagery for that of the Super Famicom at the time. To really complain about the graphics in any capacity would just be silly, so kudos here. Music and Sound Though varied throughout the Quintet trilogy, the soundtrack has always been a strong point for me for all of the games. I thoroughly enjoyed both Soul Blazer and Illusion of Gaia's tracks, thus I expected great things from Terranigma, and thankfully it delivered. When judging a soundtrack, I always look for a good blend of being catchy and atmospheric, and that was delivered in droves with the superb soundtrack. The tone of the game is set rather early with the lazy, warm, somewhat melancholy tune of that of Hometown, and it continues throughout. Some of the standout tracks to me were that of The Underworld, The Overworld, the music that plays during cutscenes, L's theme, Zway, and my personal favorite of the shipport theme, and of course, many more. I also found the sound effects and design to be quite good, though admittedly I wasn't a huge fan of having to hear Ark run into things all the time. <laughs> Controls. Although sometimes overlooked, I feel that this is one of the better aspects of Terranigma, and it is to not be ignored. For an action RPG, if your controls lag behind, you're not going to have a good time. In comparison to the gameplay structure and controls of Soul Blazer, for example, Terranigma is so far advanced. Being able to move freely and have tight and fluid combat makes for a wonderful time traversing dungeons and towns. The overworld is much more reserved, but it gets the job done effectively in getting from point A to point B, either by foot, boat, or plane. I truthfully didn't have many gripes at all with the controls. I always felt like I had proper control of Ark, for lack of a better term. The combat was fun, fluid, and easy. And really, the only thing that I struggled with from time to time was stringing along continuous running right after slide attacks. 
and occasionally the odd hiccup early on with the more diagonal platforming, but aside from that the controls are responsive and help lend itself to a fun gameplay system. Gameplay and fun factor. The time to get into the meat is now. Touching back on the graphics, soundtrack, and controls, these three things add up essentially to a solid game just by themselves. The mechanics in combat of Terranigma are fluid, easy to understand, at times challenging, other times leisurely, and it lends itself to an all-around good time. The combat system revolves around a certain number of attacks that Ark could pull off. Though I spent most of the game doing the running slicer attack, there is a decent variety there. There are also a good number of weapons and armors to purchase and find throughout the game with varying stats and abilities. A few instances where it might be beneficial to downgrade in order to attack a boss weakness <laughs> like the Light Rod and Bloody Mary. Also worth mentioning is the box menu screen. Essentially you jump into a box, action pauses and you're able to equip and unequip, throw things away, check your stats, use consumables and so on. Nothing crazy, but a pretty decent spectacle and honestly an upgrade over the menuing system in that evolution of Gaia. Oh yeah, and of course there's a magic system, but I'll leave it at that for now. One of the main additions to Terranigma from the previous titles is an actual navigable overworld and underworld, with the overworld being much more vast, explorable, and I specifically recall myself spending almost three hours doing exploration and side quests once I got my boat in what I dubbed the side quest stream. Going a bit deeper into the side quests, basically once you start clearing dungeons and advancing the story, there are many opportunities present to advance world and town growth. Whether it be simply communicating with people, giving people the time of day regarding their hobbies, or sharing creations, inventions, and hobbies with others in other areas, over time many of the towns and villages in Terranigma will grow. Things will expand, things change, and sometimes not always for the better. For example, there was a growth that I heard about regarding a zoo which puts a bunch of the animals from earlier in the game that you conversed with into captivity. Now I said I heard about it because frankly I didn't max out all of the civilization. I gave it the old college try, but eventually I felt the heat of live streaming and I didn't want to look at a guide nonstop, so I just continued to push on. That being said, I have to give Terranigma its props for having an excellent and intriguing world building experience. Although at times it seemed to be quite fetch questy, take this, deliver this here, rinse and repeat, also at times convoluted, it was still addicting and lots of fun. A future playthrough will be held where I will try my best to 100% it, I swear. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to some areas in the game that were just straight up memorable from their looks, the inhabitants, and the vibes. Neo Tokyo, Yonkou, The Sun Coast, Loire Castle, Safarium, and many other spots are sure to leave an impression on you as well. Many of the dungeons in Terranigma are very well designed. They feature interesting gimmicks that help set them apart from the others, feature engaging combat as well, looting, and so on. Some of the standout dungeons of the game to me include Loran, though I will admit that it was a pain when I was streaming because, whew, boy did I get lost. My favorite area in the game is that of Sylvain Castle, and Eklamata. Going back to the story and overall town slash world building, there will be many moments in the game that grip you, tug on your heartstrings, or just overall make you reflective. Some of those moments for me include the goat experience in Eklamata. I don't like spoiling plot points in my reviews that much, so it's more of a list again while trying to stay somewhat vague, so bear with me. Some incredibly dark and tragic things revolving around the King of Loire, and overall the tail end of the game had me gripped in many ways and even things like reuniting with some old friends later on in some unforeseen areas. There are enough twists and turns present that keep you in tune and wanting more. At its core, Terranigma is a really good game. It's hard to deny it. But again, all I heard for years was lofty praise, a game that's just as good or better than something like Chrono Trigger. And while I enjoyed my playthrough, I enjoyed the game overall, and I do think it's a good end to the Quintet trilogy, the game is not without its flaws and I want to address some of the issues that I had with that, and how quite frankly for me, they kept it from being an all time top of the list classic. I also wanted to add very quickly, I realized I forgot to include this in my original script so this is sort of an addendum. Uh, the difficulty of the game is not too bad, overall it was a pretty casual experience. Uh, there are a couple spots that could be a little bit tough, but in general it's not that difficult. Negatives. I want to preface by saying that some of these things aren't downright negative through and through, but all of my points that I'm going to bring up in my opinion have a negative edge to them at the very least. The first negative pops up pretty early in the game. Quite frankly, the beginning of the game is super slow. The process of resurrecting the continents in Chapter 1 through the towers just feels like an overly long tutorial. Now don't get me wrong, that's kind of what it is, but it's not like Terranigma is some 70 plus hour epic RPG or something that requires such a clear and long tutorial segment that overstays its welcome. Sure, learning the mechanics is cool, but some of these could have easily just been learned naturally, and a few of the things that you do might only be used once or twice throughout the game, if that. I just felt like it was pretty bland and ridiculously slow to get off the ground. 
Another minor thing that is experienced early on are the massive delays before something starts, like a cutscene or some intense dialogue or action. It's almost like this cartridge game has a major loading hiccup. If you've played through the game, I think you know what I'm talking about. Again, yeah, nitpicky, minor, sure, but still annoying. Another major gripe that I have with this game is the magic and magic rock system. Basically, magic rocks can be converted with currency into rings that can cast magic spells. But overall, the magic system is almost useless. I used it a bit early on, and against a specific boss, but in general I barely touched it. In fact, most of the bosses apparently can't even be harmed by magic, and the majority of the enemies, like almost all of them, can be just dealt with easily with regular attacks. To me, the fun part, I guess, was just finding the slew of magic rocks. Apparently, there's over 90 plus in total throughout various areas of the game. It's almost kind of like a video game achievement checklist or something, but overall, they really fumbled the magic system in this game, which is surprising, and this is an undeniable letdown. Though I did like a lot of the dungeons in Terra Enigma, I felt like most of them towards the tail end of the game were just kind of weird, boring, or annoying. Some that stick out to me as being towards the bottom of the dungeon totem pole include Dragoon Castle, which is basically just one huge gimmick dungeon and not much else though there is some story advancement towards the end. The Mermaid Tower, which was short, uninteresting, and had a trash boss. And Norfest, which is just an atrocious maze. Speaking of trash bosses, the boss quality in Terra Enigma is all over the board. I felt like the first half of the game, excluding the first four towers of course, they had some cool bosses. Shadow Keeper, Parasite, Dark Twins, and Stormkeeper were all interesting, but honestly, after them, other than Bloody Mary, I don't think I liked any of them. The quality and quantity just fell off the face of the earth to me. I absolutely loved the design of the final boss and all of its forms, but goodness gracious, the fights themselves were awful. Sort of a puzzle boss slash RNG based affair that oftentimes I just found myself waiting for the right moment. To me they weren't captivating and generally they were just annoying. Say what you will, but I do feel like at least I was doing something against the final boss as a soul blazer and illusion of Gaia. They weren't incredibly challenging, but they were far more engaging. Lastly, some quick gripes that I didn't want to get into too much, the escort quests, albeit really only two, they are kind of annoying. I mean, escort quests, they're really never fun, right? And back to the story, the main villain of Terra Enigma really just seemed to be ham-fisted in at the very end of the game. Kind of an odd choice for a game that's so focused on its story and feelings, it's just sort of like, surprise, this is the bad guy now, deal with it. I just feel like the game was overly ambitious, a bit unpolished and clunky in a lot of areas, and I've been on record and I will continue to be on record in saying that I prefer Illusion of Gaia in a big way to Terra Enigma. I'm not going to go on as to why. I reviewed Illusion of Gaia already and if you want to check that out, check the pinned comment or description below. But in general, Illusion of Gaia resonated with me on a deeper level. Many of the topics in that game infiltrated its way into my personal life, and in general I kind of felt like it was a little bit more polished, albeit a much more linear experience, and overall I just enjoyed it more. Summation. Now that you were berated with my dislikes of the game, I do want to bring you, the viewer, back down to Earth again, so to speak. Terra Enigma is a very good game. Objectively, it's technically advanced from the other trilogy entries, I had fun playing it, and I do want to replay it again like I said and try to 100% it in the future. I don't think it's bad at all. My issue is that, truly in my heart of hearts, I don't see how Terra Enigma is one of the quote top tier RPGs of all time, I just don't. But I do realize that people have their own feelings, perspectives, and preferences. For example, maybe some of the things that resonated very deeply within me from Illusion of Gaia, they fell flat for others while the same could be said for me with Terra Enigma. But in general, at its core, Terra Enigma is a solid action RPG, one that would have been very nice had we gotten it here officially in the United States, and I'm so glad that I finally played it. Despite all of my gripes, which I know I tend to ramble on about negatives a lot in my reviews, <laughs> to a certain extent, yeah, Terra Enigma lived up to the hype. Overall, I give Terra Enigma a 8.25 out of 10. If you've enjoyed this review, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing if you haven't already. If you want more Terra Enigma or Quintet Trilogy content, check out the pinned comment, description, or end screen. Take care.